Hello, United. Today, the gospel reading comes from Mark chapter 1, verses 21 through 28. And today, I'm reading from the Message Bible, the Message Bible translation. Then they entered Capernaum. When the Sabbath arrived, Jesus lost no time in getting to the meeting place. He spent the day there teaching. They were surprised at his teaching, so forthright, so confident, not quibbling and quoting like the religious scholars. Suddenly, while still in the meeting place, he was interrupted by a man who was deeply disturbed and yelling out, What business do you have here with us, Jesus? Nazarene, I know what you're up to. You're the Holy One of God, and you've come to destroy us. Jesus shut him up. Quiet, get out of him. The afflicting spirit threw the man into spasms, protesting loudly, and got out. Everyone there was incredulous, buzzing with curiosity. What's going on here? A new teaching that does what it says? He shuts up defiling demonic spirits and sends them packing? News of this traveled fast and was soon all over Galilee. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of God's holy word. Today is the last in a series of Finding Our Way. The title is The Sunken Place Helper. This worship series, Finding Our Way, speaks to focusing on the fundamentals of our Christian faith. We began the first Sunday in January talking about Take Me Back, talking about our beginning journey, our beginning spiritual journeys, The second Sunday, we continued with fresh starts and baptisms, talked about beginnings, and we actually had a baptism. The third Sunday, we talked about inescapable love, how we need to be reminded that God loves us and that we can't escape from that. Last week, we talked about personal invitations, how each of us gets a personal invitation to relationship with God. And today, the sunken place helper. My child and I are very close. Actually, all of my children and I are very close. I talk to them every week and with my daughter every day. Yesterday, I was telling her that I made some buttermilk biscuits, to which she responded, really? Jokingly? Well, you could send me some. We laughed that off, but later in the day, I went up to the postal service to overnight a half dozen biscuits to her. When the representative told me the cost, which you can believe was a lot, I recalled, and she quickly told me how much a Friday delivery would be, much less, but not overnight. And then something happened. I thought about my daughter, and I looked at the young lady, And I said, you know what? I'm going to do something bold. I'm going to send those biscuits overnight. And then I stood right at the counter and began to cry. I couldn't help myself. The tears came before I could stop them. I had to ask the dear young lady to excuse my tears, but that I hadn't seen my children for nearly a year because of the pandemic. These are the words from a pandemic survivor, and I trust if you're hearing me that you too are a pandemic survivor. This pandemic has touched all of our lives, some harder than others. The enormity of it all is not fully realized because we are still in the midst of it. And the words of our new president ring true. It's going to get worse before it gets better. Finally, a vaccine. But truthfully, we are still trying to get through this thing 
but someday quite unexpectedly. It comes to us all, whether in a post office or in our homes or in our beds, a rush of panic, a rush of tears, a rush of anxiety or pain or sadness that cannot be brushed off so easily. We find ourselves in the sunken place. The term sunken place was born from this horror satire movie, Get Out, where the main character is lured to his girlfriend's home where he experiences a series of microaggressions. It is a visit with his girlfriend's mother where he, she separates his consciousness from the control of his body and he is unable to move. Some have reported a similar experience that when they're sleeping and they're dreaming and they wake up out of the dream too soon and they're unable to move their body. The sunken place is a place where no matter how hard you scream, the system silences you. The sunken place has come to refer to people who have felt marginalized and folks who have been frustrated with the last four years and what is happening in our world. I imagine during the pandemic and sometimes our lives, we have felt ourselves in the sunken place. This is where we enter the biblical text today. There is a man in a sunken place who does not have control over his own body. We are told that a spirit other than the Holy Spirit lives in him, and that spirit has control over him by uttering things that the person himself would not have said. This spirit has more voice in his body than he does himself. It is not wanted, and yet it is there. While the man sits in a sunken place, paralyzed and helpless in his own body. We've been talking about the basics of our Christianity and our faith. And at the heart and center is the state of humanity. Jesus was sent to the earth to help our ancestors out. And I imagine not much has changed as it relates to human beings. He even says in the gospel, I have come for those in the sunken place. I have come for those who are struggling. I have come for those who have voices that are unwanted in their bodies. I have come for those who are struggling. I have come for those who are not well. I have come from those who are stressed out and anxious, on the cliff, can't sleep at night. Jesus came for us. In this text, we do not know what happens to the spirit or where it goes, but Jesus strips the spirit of the ability to inhabit this person's body. This exorcism does not eliminate evil and oppression. We know that for ourselves. But it denies this kind of force, the authority and power to hold influence over this person's life. Therefore, I'm giving Jesus a new title, the sunken place helper. And saying, just as Jesus does it for this person, this is available to us also. When things hold influence over our life, the sunken place helper can help us out. Many decades ago, when the Oprah, show, Oprah Winfrey show came on at 4 p.m., I don't know if you guys remember that. I was on the East Coast, so I don't know what time it came on here. But over in Virginia, it came on about 4 p.m. every day. And I remember one time on the show, Oprah had lost 50 pounds. And if you knew anything about Oprah, that whole weight thing was up and down. But she wanted to lose weight. And she tried everything. And so when she lost 50 pounds, it was celebration mode. And there is a big celebration on Oprah's show. And she bought out these bags that had about 50 pounds in them. And what she tried to do was to pick them up. And she showed on her show that she was unable to pick up the bags. And Oprah said, I can't pick up these bags, and yet I was carrying this weight on me for years. I imagine that when we are in the sunken place in our own lives, that it's like carrying a lot of extra weight. And yet our faith in our Lord is here to help us. We are not alone. This week, I had a doctor's appointment the morning after it snowed. I don't know if you guys remember in the heat of today, but it snowed on Monday night as well. And I had an appointment on Tuesday, 
and God only knows why. It was 9 a.m. I needed to get the dog settled, needed to get my son to the west side, and I needed to get to the west suburbs. I don't know if Jay's listening, but I was almost out where, where you live to see my doctor. I thought it was an important enough visit to keep the appointment. I walked outside, and there was a lot of snow. And it was clear to me I had little time that if I had to shovel myself out, I was going to be late. Some man down the block offered to shovel me out, but I was thinking, I don't have any money, I don't want to ask someone to help me, and I don't have money to pay them. So I started shoveling, and then this man came closer and started helping, and I was grateful. And then I discovered it was my neighbor, and then another man came from somewhere, and within minutes, I was shoveled out, and there was hope. I don't want to say I made it to my appointment actually early, which surprised even me. But I needed help, and help was there. Sometimes we need help, and just like me, it's hard for us to say, hey, yeah, I need help, and we say no. Sometimes we get in that sunken place, and we can't really do it for ourselves. We need a help that is beyond us. And sometimes it's hard for us to admit. The Gospel of Mark depicts Jesus as the one who is uniquely authorized, commissioned, and empowered to declare and institute the reign of God. Through Jesus, then, we glimpse characteristics of this reign. It is intrusive, breaking old boundaries that benefit another kind of rule. But it is about liberating people from the powers that afflict them and that keep so many of us, so many of our bodies and our society bounded from flourishing. Even those observing noticed Jesus' authority in a way he spoke and in the way he administered healing to the man in the sunken place. Who is that man? Who is that man that speaks like that? It is in the gospel where we see souls set free from destructive tendencies and powers that we see that getting help from Jesus is getting help beyond our control. Today I began with one of my colleagues who visited the post office to send biscuits to her daughter. The impact of COVID pressed through her eyelids. And she decided there was no cost that would prohibit her from mailing those biscuits. I know, I'm curious too about how they taste it. As many of us do, she tried to gather herself together and push on. As one lady in the line outside yesterday waiting to get in the Whole Foods said to another person in line, it is what it is. It certainly is what it is, but it still gets to us sometimes. Maybe we find ourselves speaking in unknown tongues. Maybe we find unknown tongues. Maybe we find familiar tongues speaking in us. Or maybe we cry. It's all beyond words, this COVID thing. Even though we use words, it's beyond words. And yet Jesus says, I got you. I got you. I am here and I came just for you. When my friend got home, somewhat still undone and not put back together again the way we like to be as human beings. She was still a little undone, and then she took a look at the receipt. The postal worker had blessed her, and then she began to cry all over again. Wherever you are on life's journey, and I know some of you are on the cliff, Some of y'all are fine, but some of y'all are on the cliff. Remember how very much God loves you. Remember that Jesus was willing to search for the one sheep, even though he had a whole lot of other sheep. He was willing to search for that one sheep that was lost. Remember the woman at the well. Remember just how far Jesus came. There is no distance too far that Jesus will not come to get us. And now remember this story too. Remember the man whose body and mind were occupied by unwelcoming spirits. And Jesus notices the man 
And Jesus assesses the situation, even if it didn't take a rocket scientist to notice something was going on with this man. And then Jesus helps the man out of the sunken place. He says to the spirit, get out. Get out. Get out, spirit. Get out, anxiety. Get out, fear. Get out. And it is by this authority that the spirit leaves. Amen.